Morning. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are warned that the following presentation may contain images and voices of deceased peoples. John Lester. John Lester is born in Sydney and raised in Redfern. He is a descendant of the Wanarua group from the Hunter region. I selected John Lester because he made a huge contribution to Aboriginal education and has significant figure in the history of New South Wales and Aboriginal education. The Wanarua people. I would like to speak about the Wanarua people as it is their strength and determination for survival that runs through John's whole existence. The Wanarua people are inland people of the southeast region of the Hunter River. New South Wales, and their neighbouring groups include the Gwedjewal, the Waramai, Awabikal, Darkajan and Wiradjuri. In 1826, the Wanarua and Wiradjuri groups crossed the mountains against the whites in an uprising. The Wanarua people are one of the first Indigenous people to accept mixed blood, and as they believe it was the only way to survive. Aboriginal education. From Charles' earliest beginnings, culture, history and law were embedded in how they interact and how with intricate kinship, ties and responsibilities. Elder status could only be obtained with proven capacity and responsibility to your peers to ensure the survival of your nation. Athel Frederick Lester, John's father, left an important influence on John as a child. John's father, Athel, enlisted in the army and served in World War II. Athel's successful activism involving fighting for Aboriginal rights and for Aboriginal returned servicemen to be able to enter the RSL clubs. Athel became very sick with malaria, contracted in the war. The government finally provided care and entitlements, after which the family settled in Redfern. Athol had a very strong work ethic. Athol worked with William Ferguson and Uncle Jack Patton for the rights of Aboriginal people. Early life for John. John grew up in Redfern, Sydney, and attended Darlinghurst Public School. John grew up with his cousins and lots of friends from all nations who lived in the area. His passion for rugby league in the Rabbitohs team probably saw him playing after school at the Redfern Oval, dreaming of becoming one of their heroes. John writes about the first time he experienced racism in Redfern from a non-Indigenous student. He drew the conclusion that he would have to be better than the non-Indigenous students to survive the racial prejudice. John writes about that this was his prime motivator. So John excelled sport and he was placed in eight guy classes, eventually to secondary school education. His popularity amongst his peers led him to be elected as the school captain. John Lester won a Commonwealth bursary and finally an Aboriginal study grant in 1970 that led him to be elected, that led him to complete his H. HSC or high school certificate. John was the first Aboriginal teacher at Redfern Primary School and also Moree High School in New South Wales. Aboriginal Education Unit. In 1960 through the early 1970s, Australia was experiencing social change with developing social groups seeking equality of status. Among these groups were the women and Aboriginal people. For example, the Freedom Ride in 1965 brought attention to the plight of Aboriginal people in regional Australia, in New South Wales. TAFE has always given priority to meeting local community needs and one major concern was Aboriginal education. In order to improve access to education for Aborigines, TAFE responded with the establishment of the Aboriginal Education Unit in 1978. 
In one of many firsts, in 1983, John was appointed the first Aboriginal person to head up Aboriginal Education Unit at TAFE New South Wales. One of the many initiatives, including launching a mobile unit designed to provide instruction for Aboriginal communities in isolated and by, by distance. Training covered rural construction, motor mechanic, mechanics, and other skills. The Aboriginal Education Unit also developed certificate entrance and tertiary preparation courses for Aboriginals to enable students to enter higher education courses, especially in teaching. Some of our earliest Aboriginal teachers are now highly respected leaders in the community. We can't just get Aborigines and put them into a college, set them up as a support group, offer them all the uh, availability of services that particular colleges have, and then expect them to partake in those institutions. It is a fact that there exists racist people in all sections of our community, and TAFE is no exception to this. And for an Aboriginal person to be confronted by individuals that they will find in TAFE institutions is going to make the job of mainstreaming Aborigines quite, quite difficult. Not only that, I would argue that the mirror image of Aborigines in TAFE institutions is quite invisible. Um, I have been to several colleges now, and there is not, I would argue, one college, no, I, there is one, Griffith, where there were a tremendous amount of Aborigines already in the college. But outside of Griffith, I don't think I've walked into a college that yet that has made me feel as though I'm an Aborigine and I deserve to be there. And that's very significant. So we've got to sh change the whole attitudes that colleges have. We've got to make sure that they become images that Aborigines can feel that they are a part of. That will involve a tremendous amount of work in terms of staff development. And if there's anyone from staff development, they'll know how big a job it is because of the submission I put to them. And it is important, and for the first time, I think, the unit will be embarking in a significant way on changing the attitudes of teachers to make sure that they can then realise that their particular courses can have perspectives and in terms of Aboriginal education or Aboriginal history, philosophy, background. And they all can do it, I would argue. I'm yet to be disproved in relation to that. Another great initiative still going strong was the establishment of your college in Darlington, Sydney. John Lester writes the campus is an Aboriginal, is a vibrant community focused education centre and led by experts targeting Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander education. Another huge first for John Lester was becoming the first Aboriginal principal of TAFE New South Wales College in Griffith in 1986. John then went on to become principal at TAFE New South Wales Grafton College before us acting as assistant director at the Coffs Harbour Education Campus. His work in Aboriginal education is acknowledged by his life membership and re-election to vice president of the New South Wales Aboriginal Education Consultative Group in 1998. Since 2009, John has been acting Dean of Wuntuka School of Aboriginal Studies. John graduated with a Masters of Education Administration from Newcastle University before becoming the inaugural Chair of Aboriginal Studies at the same university. Since 1997, he is also the Director of Umlika Indigenous, the first Indigenous academic from the University of Newcastle to receive the Ray Debus Award for his contributions to Indigenous education and research. Although no longer at TAFE New South Wales, John continues to improve educational outcomes for Aboriginal people. This has been Leanne Lovegrove. Thank you.